Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from the marriage subreddit from Familiar Kinfolk 629 and says, Sister-in-law thinks her wedding commitments are more important than my dying mother's cancer test results. My 42 female sister-in-law, 38 female, is getting married. I had very little contact with us before the wedding. Any contact initiated has been us visiting my husband's 45 male family, which is out of state, and has a 14 to 16 hour drive each way. I've always gotten along with my sister-in-law, but this was a whole side of her that my husband has told me about, but I had never actually seen. My mother has been diagnosed with cancer and has had to have many treatments, including surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. Before all of these treatments, we had to wait on a test to determine which stage of cancer she was in. When we were waiting on my mother's cancer test results, we would know in three days, and the cancer test results could be absolutely devastating and could let us know how long my mother had to live. Every day seemed like an eternity. During this time, my sister-in-law called my husband and I to ask us exactly which role we and our children would have in her wedding. She knew exactly what position we were in, and we told her on the phone call repeatedly what was happening. At this point, how long we could stay and what we could do would be determined by my mother's test results. Since we still had many months left before my sister-in-law's wedding, we did not know if we would have to be planning my mother's funeral at this point. We only had three days before we would know a lot more to give her an accurate answer. This was also the first and only time she's ever called us in 15 years of our marriage. She began asking us exactly what we would be doing at our wedding, what day we would be there and how long we could stay. My husband and I repeatedly told her there's no way we could know during this phone call what we would be capable of doing seven months from then and would have a better idea once we got the test result. We repeatedly told her that that would take three days. During this phone call, she began getting upset and angry with us, using her sassiest and grainiest valley girl voice to tell us what she needed to know by tomorrow, what we could do during the reception and what our children could do during the reception. I do not know how to go forward with this woman after this interaction. She insisted on knowing by the next day and began getting very angry with us. We were really calm and kept trying to calmly explain again the position we were in, as I couldn't fathom that she would have such an attitude of insistence in the situation we were in. She began insisting that she needed our children and us to help us set up chairs, serve people's food and clean up after the reception. Overall, she wanted to know immediately what roles we could play in giving her free labor intensive roles at her discretion, so she could save money on their wedding. Mind you, we would be driving 16 hours to come serve her, while my mother needed me for help after having been diagnosed with cancer. I still would have gone to a wedding before this phone call and figured out how to help my mother as well, if my mother's stage of cancer wasn't as severe. It turned out my mother's cancer has since spread to her bones, and she is not in good shape. After the interaction, I do not want to see her or be around her at all. I'm not even sure that I want my children around her either. My husband began getting angry with her and eventually raised his voice a bit and told her that my mother could die, which brought me to tears during this phone call. My children and I have all been traumatized by my mother's diagnosis and now this. Having sheer mental exhaustion, I cannot gather my thoughts to think of what to do in this situation. Any advice will be greatly appreciated and I ask you please to be kind since this is very traumatic for my family and I. Thank you. Edit and thank you so much for all the support and advice. This helped me to feel so much more level headed and sure of my decision going forward. I will not be attending the wedding and neither will my kids. Thinking about the issues at hand, I recently remembered not being able to go to a college graduation ceremony due to medical issues for my mum, and she sent a card to my husband thanking him for his support because he was able to make it, just barely. She never sent him or I anything in the mail ever before. It seemed to be an underhanded remark. Thinking back on things even more, there have been times she allowed her niece and nephew she was babysitting to throw things at our family when we had just came into his in-law's house after a long trip. 
and allowed them to say some things to us that I've never heard come out of a kid's mouth before. I have obviously overlooked many things now I think about. And we can already see that OP's got the advice of the comments and seems to be taking that on board, which we'll cover a few of those comments in a moment. But yeah, this just doesn't seem like someone that I would like to call family either. I'm just trying to put myself in your shoes, OP, and imagine someone came up to me when one of my family members was going through their cancer diagnosis and treatment, etc., and I'd be telling them to fuck right off. I understand that their wedding is important to them, but to have no empathy for your situation and what you're going through, what your family is going through, what your mother's going through, is just unforgivable for me. Dealing with cancer and care and the treatments, and I know it's different for different types of cancers, but it is absolutely draining for everyone around it as well. Not just physically helping with the appointments and the care, etc., but mentally as well. I can with my dad particularly, I can remember being absolutely exhausted, you know, always thinking about what he might be worried about. So for her to treat you this way is absolutely unforgivable. I wouldn't be going to that wedding at all. I can tell you that right now. But even without the diagnosis and 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 things like that and i know it's not the point of the story but she sounds like she's going to treat you and your family like crap anyway for free labor serving people at her wedding i mean what the hell op you deserve so much better i wish your mother you and your family all the best but we'll cover that update in a few of those comments so emr says good god she sounds self-centered and awful if you even go to this wedding, which who could blame you if you didn't, your kids aren't free labor for her. Opie says, okay, so I'm not alone in my feelings of shock at her behavior. This is good to know. My children will not be serving guests or users free labor. I'm sure of that. I do not want to go to the monster-in-law's wedding at all. Primary criticism replies to Opie and says, at this point, I'd send her a text or an email like this. Sister-in-law, I've had a few days to think about it, and I've decided I'm not coming to your wedding. Your behavior and lack of compassion towards my mother's health issues and her dying made me realize I don't like you. I don't actually want to see you or support you. I'd wish you the best, but I'd be lying. I'm going to block you because I don't want your selfishness to make my mother dying harder on me or my kids. Much delivery says, I honestly wouldn't go. Save yourself and your family the stress. If she isn't understanding about your situation, she does not deserve your time and help. Use the time you have with your mum and make memories for you and your family. At the end of the day, those memories will make the grief better once she's gone, and none can take those away from you. Looking back, I wish I had made more memories with my family members who passed away. Regret is ugly and doesn't go away. I'm honestly sorry about your mum. I hope you find peace and time with your mum. OP responds and says, my thoughts exactly. We were thinking of just having my husband go, since it's his sister. This has permanently derailed my relationship with his sister. I can't believe I have to even think about this right now. And one more comment from Blame the Lada, who says, first, I'm very sorry about the news of your mother's health. Second, sister in is acting horrible, and I'm sorry that you have to deal with it. Her behavior is abhorrent at best. Based on your post, her actions seem somewhat pushy and predatory. I'm icked out. Personally, this would be it for me. Husband could deal with his sister any way he wants, but she wouldn't be around me, my children, or in my house. Her behavior indicates she doesn't care about any of you. To her, you don't exist as people. You are just set pieces in the stage production of her life. OP says, You are so very accurate. Wow, you hit the nail on the head 100%. I worry she's a psychopath at this point. I've learned to listen to my husband more. He tried to tell me in the past and I didn't get it. So OP did come back into the post to update and says, after finding out that my sister-in-law was not going to wait two more days for my mother's cancer results, I decided not to go to a wedding with my children. My husband is welcome to go if he would like to. He's also going to buy her a present. Well, my mother is dying and going downhill very quickly. I have now found out that my sister-in-law and her future husband has blocked not only my husband and I, but also our children, 15 male, 12 female, on social media. There was no explanation for this, and my main concern at this point is her desire to come visit us across state lines. She's invited herself and her family, extremely unruly children included, to our home repeatedly. And my husband has so far been pretty agreeable, at least temporarily, so as to avoid any arguments. 
Not only will I never have this woman in my home, I'm worried she's going to try to come to my mother's funeral when my mother dies soon. I do not want to see her, her family, and I do not want her to have any contact with my children. I'm very exhausted right now and could just use some top tips on next steps. Thank you so much in advance. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? What advice would you give to OP? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story, which comes from the Server Life subreddit from No Luck in Love, who says, I just quit mid shift. It does come with an update as well. I've been a server at this restaurant basically since it started two years ago. I've given it my 110% and it wasn't enough. I was supposed to be a server only, but I was basically a manager without getting paid. I always covered when someone didn't show up. I even had days where I had to work as the only server slash bartender because they didn't have enough staff. Then he started hiring way too many people and I was consistently stuck with the worst shifts. I still made money, but come on, I was there when no one else was. Then everyone started quitting again. I was the only employee there that had been with them since the start of everyone else left. So it was me and a girl I had trained about a year ago. We are the oldest servers there and there was a chef who's been with us for 8 months. The only staff he had managed to consistently keep. The boss came in furious and started berating us like he was doing us a favor. Keeping the place open and we had to kiss his feet because of it. He started thanking us for being with him the longest. To saying we were shit at our job. Then he promoted a new server who to that day a couple of minutes before he came in was asking me how to make some drinks and needed help closing a tap. That was the last straw. I just stood up and quit. I still can't believe it. So there were some relevant comments on this one. Someone said either the boss is under extreme distress and projecting it out on you guys or boss is really bad at their job. Opie says he's just a rich dude who's never there. It probably hurt his ego that 90% of his staff quit in the last three weeks. It's the only explanation I can think of. But thank you. I do hope what comes next is better. OP shares a bit about how they feel. They say, I know. I thought I would regret it, but I still haven't. Instead, I feel relieved. Thank you. Someone asks if the new person who was recently promoted is like friends or related to the manager in any way. OP says, yeah, she is friends with the owner. We all suspect they had something more going on though. Someone asks OP, did you get the money you're owed for working? OP says, nope, that's the only thing I'm worried about. They pay every week on Wednesday. Tips are mostly in credit cards, so they pay that and the hourly wage in check. So right now, the only thing I can do is wait for Wednesday. Someone says, what are they going to do without you? OP says, yes, they're closed for this week, or at least until they manage to get more people with experience. Turns out they were counting on me to train the new servers, because their new supervisor doesn't know anything about how the restaurant works. Also, the other two people who were there with me quit today too. Yeah, at the very least, I get the satisfaction that he had to close for a few days after I left. I know he must be livid right now because of it. So at least I get that since I know he's not going to change. But OP did come back in to update the post and says, I made a post last week about quitting mid-shift. It turns out shit hit the fan, so I thought I'd update you guys. I walked out after he berated me and my two co-workers who were the only people that knew what they were doing. After I walked out, the other server I trained quit after her shift was over. That left them with their new supervisor who didn't know shit and is rude to customers and her friend who had started that same day. They decided to close for a few weeks since they now didn't have servers or anyone to train them. I was the one who trained 95% of the servers that worked there. Most of them, it was their first job. When they left my hands, they found better jobs. So I'm proud of that. Come Wednesday when I was supposed to pick up my check. They were closed, so I called them. Didn't pick up the first three times. Sent a text they didn't reply until late at night that we should come to the restaurant Thursday. On Thursday, he told us that there was money missing from last week and he wouldn't pass until he knew what happened to the money and threatened to go to the police. We said he should check the security cameras and we didn't take anything. Still, he didn't want to pay us and told us to wait till Friday. So we did. Friday, he made us wait in his office for an hour before telling us to come to the restaurant because he was there. We went to the restaurant where he was talking to his new staff. There, he berated us again in front of his new staff, saying we didn't manage to close him down because he already had new employees. I said, seems to me like you are closed, but okay. 
He was mad and talked shit for a while before giving us our checks and threatening to sue because we closed him down for a few weeks. The irony. As of now, he still hasn't done anything, but I guess I will update if something does happen. I already contacted a lawyer just in case this all keeps going to shit. Someone questions OP and said, did you say anything? OP said I wanted to say a lot of things, but just standing there and looking like I didn't care made him even madder. He just kept raising his voice and I just smiled enjoying his distress. Someone says he's just making empty threats. OP says yeah, that's what I think too. I'm sure he wouldn't do anything. If he wants it to get ugly, I know a lot of shit about that place. So if I'm going down, he's going with me. <laughs> Someone says no way the new people are going to last long, right? OP says I could see in their faces they weren't going to last long. The manager just hid in the kitchen. The new employees were there speechless. I was listening and acting like I didn't care and he was just about to explode. If they didn't quit after that, I wish them luck. Someone says, depending on your state, he legally could have been required to pay you in 24 hours and you could escalate this. OP says, I already have my money. If I can just forget about him and move on, I'd prefer to do that. He's a rich dude with a lot of influence around here, so I'd prefer not to deal with him anymore. What an idiot. So you get some new staff members and then you start talking shit to your old employees in front of them. Wow, I can just see that business going down fast. There was a comment below this one who says, Remember that episode of Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmare? Amy's Bakery. If Just jumping in here. If you haven't seen that, check it out on YouTube if, if you can find it. They had this giant restaurant with what looks like good equipment, but Amy, the chef, couldn't cook. And her husband didn't know how to run a restaurant. But they must have dumped six figures into this operation. I think people were saying he was part of some sort of mafia and was using shady money in an attempt to launder some of it as a restaurant. The OP's boss sounds like that, like he made his money elsewhere and decided he was going to throw some good money into a restaurant. And, you know, as I was reading that, I, I could actually picture that happening. Not the money laundering side of things, but just like the, the running the restaurant without any clue. I mean, that is pretty much the gist of <laughs> Gordon Ramsay's kitchen nightmares anyway. Gordon comes in, shouts at the boss a bit, and hopefully it might work out. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't. I do love to watch it. We used to get a lot of like server stories on, on these subreddits. You don't see them so much anymore. And I used to love the comments that we get because quite a few people have, have had jobs as servers at some point. And, and hearing their experience as well, you know, was just absolutely crazy sometimes dealing with some of these shitty customers, shitty bosses. It's wild, man. But now I'm going to turn this story to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story from Beautiful Explorer 363 from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit. Doesn't have an update as yet, but says, Am I the Arsehole for picking a revealing bridesmaid's dress in order to get one of my bridesmaids to drop? So this has been a long thing coming. My soon-to-be husband has a sister, let's call her Mia. Now Mia and I do not click very well. I am polite, but I wouldn't say we were friends. I felt I was forced by his family to make her a bridesmaid or she will be sad. I'm going to be blunt. Mia is fat and very insecure about it. This has led to bridesmaid dresses shopping to be a nightmare. Never could find something she wants and all the other bridesmaids and me liking it. So I gave everyone two options to vote on. Option one was getting a dress that can be styled multiple ways or picking from a collection so everyone matches, but they will need to pay for it. Option two was I will buy everyone's dress, but I choose the dress and my decision is final. My five bridesmaids voted and option two won. So I picked out a blue strapless dress with a mini slit. I really like it and I knew Mia would have an issue with it. I sent a picture to all the bridesmaids and confirming the right size before I ordered it. This is where it blew up. Mia was pissed. I picked a revealing dress. This resulted in an argument where she thinks I'm a huge jerk. And I told her she can step down if she has issues with the dress. She tried to get family on her side, but everyone knows I gave them the options and had watched me struggle to find something everyone wants. Edit. She voted for the option where I pay for the dress. I truly didn't ask her since her and mother-in-law announced she was one of my bridesmaids at a family gathering. The only way to keep the peace with the whole family was basically giving her what she wanted. I also have gone to four different shops to find a dress for everyone. And we're starting the comments with certain chemistry who says, Going against the grain, I say not the arsehole. 
The asshole here is mother-in-law and Mia. Mother-in-law for announcing Mia as a bridesmaid. Mia for being difficult. I'm fat and if I don't fit the same dress as everyone else, I'd have voted for buying my own from a collection. Mia could still ask for this if you're willing to compromise again. Your fiancé has your back. Sometimes the bridesmaids wear a dress they wouldn't have picked out because they respect the bride's choice. Indicat Princess says, not the arsehole, quotes the options and then says, you offered options. She declined them. Her participation in your wedding is optional. One could say, undesired. Everyone knows by now it is typical for a bride to choose how she'd like her bridesmaids to appear. Mia doesn't get to override the preference of everyone else simply because she is insecure with her body type. Quick get in the TARDIS says, Everyone sucks here. Your mother-in-law for trying to shoehorn Mia as a bridesmaid and you for not having the backbone to say that you will not have Mia as a bridesmaid, but would be thrilled to find a role for her elsewhere in the wedding, i.e. doing a reading or something just as important. Neither of you are doing Mia any favors by coddling her. Instead of forcing the crucial, not everything is going to go your way. Lesson from the start. And one more comment from Panda Enthusiast 89 who says, everyone sucks here. Mia sounds difficult, but if you didn't want her to be a bridesmaid, you just shouldn't have made her one. There were a million diplomatic ways to do it. I have a limited number of spots for bridesmaids and I want the women closest to me to fill those spots, but I'm excited to have you as a guest at my wedding and to get to know you better would have done the job nicely. Or you could have even told her during the dress shopping process that her refusal to agree on anything was making things difficult and it may be better if she just attended as a guest and could then wear what she wants. Your approach, however, is pretty passive aggressive. Now, what do you guys make of this situation? Do you think as a you're the arsehole, everyone sucks here, not the arsehole? What would you do in that situation? Always love to know your thoughts. <laughs> and just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for being involved. Truly, you know, always blown away by you guys. Thank you again. And I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.